All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our Unit 2, Topic 1, Continued Video, Take 2. This time, hopefully, my sound is working. I have tested it. I'm pretty confident that it's working. Um, so, let's try this again. So, uh, this is in your packet. It's page 38. Uh, it says Lesson 10. So, if you could find that in your packet. And you're actually going to need a ruler. So, I want you to measure each of the sides. And if you go to the next page, you'll see that it has a small right triangle, a medium right triangle, and a large right triangle. Um, and all three of those triangles are within this one triangle. If you notice, here, let's draw. So the large right triangle, of course, is the outermost one. Uh, then we have the medium sized triangle right here. And the smallest right triangle right there. And each of those sides, um, we're, we're going to call, a sh there's a short leg, a long leg, and a hypotenuse, right? So abbreviations, I'm just using short leg, long leg, and hypotenuse. Okay, so for the large triangle, this is going to be our hypotenuse. So for large triangle, hypotenuse, in this section, I'm going to measure that length and put that measurement in there. And it just says to the nearest centimeter. Um, this would be the long leg, right? And this should be the short leg of the large triangle, right? Short leg, the large triangle, long leg. I think you guys probably got this. Okay, I'm going to be overly clear. If you've got it, feel free to fast forward or just work it out on your own. Okay, so um, this is the medium triangles, short leg, long leg, hypotenuse. And the small triangle... Over here, we're going to have the short leg, the long leg, and the hypotenuse. So I want you to go ahead and measure those. And obviously here, like here, we're going to have this length. The short leg of the large triangle is going to be the same as the hypotenuse of the small triangle. So really, when you make one measurement, you found maybe multiple measurements. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to put all those numbers in this section right here. And then what we want you to do is see the ratios of those side lengths. What happens when you take the short leg divided by the long leg? So we're going to take the short leg divided by the long leg of the small triangle and, and see what happens. So um, something divide, so short leg divided by long leg of the small triangle and see how does it relate to the ratio or the fraction so you could you could, if you want, um, simplify in your calculator, make it a decimal. might be easier to compare them. Um, all right. I don't know if that was my microphone just losing power. So let's pause this and figure out what happened. All right. I believe we are all powered on. Okay, Mike should be working. Great, so uh, what I need you to do, I may have already said this, um, but you're going to take the short leg, long leg, divide them, and see how does that compare to the short leg, long leg of the medium triangle, and then how does that compare to the ratio on the small triangle. Um, same thing, short leg, hypotenuse, and long leg, hypotenuse. And I want you to see what happens. It's a really neat characteristic that happens when we compare those sides. Now all of these triangles are similar, so we're looking at similar right triangles, right? Um, this smallest triangle, the medium triangle, and the larger triangle are all similar triangles um, that have been like dilated. We talked about dilated larger, 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 larger. All right, so um, that page really was if you wanted to do your measurements there or do your calculations there, you could have done it there. All right, so now we're going to actually look at um, some problems where we are given some triangles. And what I'd like you to do is, <laughs> sorry about the noise in the background, it's my dog playing with a toy. All right, what I want you to do is um, take three the three triangles and actually redraw them. 
So I want you to redraw three little right triangles, smaller, medium, and large. So we've got right triangles like that. Okay, and the information we know, uh, the short leg of the small triangle is 36. We know the long leg, uh, the long leg of the small triangle is x. We do not know the hypotenuse. Notice the hypotenuse is always going to be opposite the right angle. All right on the medium triangle, I know x is the small leg, so I'm going to label that, and I don't at first know that value, but I actually do know that long leg because I know this whole hypotenuse of the largest triangle is 100 and I know that this part is 36 so if I subtract 100 minus 36 I'll get that remaining amount so the long leg would be 64 um, right there okay now we have to decide which two triangles we're going to use and I've decided to use the small and the medium and really I didn't have a choice because I need to have two parts. So on these two, I have two corresponding parts. Now, I understand I don't know what x is, but I know that that length is x. Here I only have one part I'm working with, so I'm not going to use that piece. Okay, so I am going to set up the ratio. And as you figured out in that last activity, if you haven't figured it out yet, go back, do those ratios, and see what happens. I don't want to give it away. Um, it's pretty cool. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set them equal. Um, we're going to take the long, um, let's just say short leg to long leg. And I'm just going to label it so I kind of have a guide and I don't forget which one I put on top and which one I put on the bottom. So I'm going to put 36 in the numerator. Sorry. Okay. And x in the denominator. So short leg is to long leg as short leg is to long leg. So x is to 64. So I'm going to put, again, short leg of the, so this is the small triangle, this is the larger triangle. Um, the long leg was 64. All right. So I know that this ratio is going to be equal because we saw in the last activity that the short leg to long leg ratio is going to stay the same. Um, for these similar triangles. So I have one fraction equal to another fraction. I can use that at that property called cross multiplication. Um, so I can multiply these two together, multiply these two together. So x times x is x squared. And you know what? Instead of instead of multiplying 64 times 36, it's a, it's a very large number. Instead of multiplying them, I'm just going to say 64 times 36. Because in just a second, I'm going to square root this. Right? So if I take the square root of both sides, the square root of a square, those two operations undo each other. They're inverse operations. So I get x equals, and technically I get plus or minus. Um, but in this situation, the context doesn't make sense for that to be a negative value. So I'm really just kind of looking at the positive version. And then I can look at these separately. The square root of 64 is 8 and the square root of 36 is 6. So my answer is x equals, what is 8 times 6? 48. All right. So I've now figured out that x is 48. And that was my goal, to figure out what x was. All right. OK. Um, I feel like the next one's pretty similar. So what I want you to do is go ahead and hit pause. Um, draw yourself your three triangles. Set up what information do you know, um, and try setting up this problem and solving it, and then hit play, and the answer will pop up, and you can check your work. All right. If you haven't hit pause, go ahead, hit pause, rewind for a second, try the problem yourself. It's important you're getting this feedback. Okay. So here, I end up with x equals 15. And again, when I square root of a square, this really ends up being a, a plus or minus 15. But in the context of the problem, it makes sense that it's a positive 15. OK? All right. Um, so in this case, we use the short leg and the hypotenuse. And it didn't matter if you put the hypotenuse in the numerator and the short leg in the denominator, um, as long as 
you were consistent with each one. And in this case, we didn't use the middle triangle, middle size triangle. We just used um, the smallest and largest triangles. All right. So you have a couple more to practice there. Um, you want to work on finding. Oh, let's do one where we have to add, add or subtract. Hmm. Okay. So in problem number four, <coughs> we've got this short side. But if I were to look at the hypotenuse, what is the hypotenuse here? It's not just x and it's not just 36, it's x plus 36. So in my drawing here, I'm going to have this as 60 and this is the quantity x plus 36. Um, and then what else do I know? Let's see. I also know hypotenuse and short leg of the smallest triangle. So I'm going to use that one and I'm going to say 36 is here. That looks like a 2. 36 and 60. So I can set this up. 36 over 60 equals 60 over, right? Okay, let's just make sure. Short leg over hypotenuse. Short leg, hypotenuse. Short leg, hypotenuse. X plus 36. Great. So when we cross multiply, we want to be careful. Um, so here 6 times 6 is 36, so I know it's going to be 3600. And then here I need to make sure, I'm going to write it over here. 3600 is equal to, we need to make sure we take that 36 and distribute it. When I do this multiplication, it's not just multiplying to the x, but it's multiplying to both. Okay. Alright. So... Let's see what that works out to be. All right, we're going to distribute this. 36 times 36 is, so we have 36x plus 1296 equals 3600. Now we want to get rid of anything that's being added or subtracted first. We're going to subtract that 1296. And in this case, we only have a linear situation, a uh, linear function, so we're, we don't need to do a square root. We're just isolating x. Um, so we take, let's see, 3,600. Hmm. All right. 3,600 and subtract off 12.96. And we're left with... 2,304, and divide both sides, and divide by 36, and we get x equals 64. Alright, so if we went back up here, this is 64, so if we added those two together, it would be 100. All right, so this side would be 100. All right, so those are a couple examples that I'm giving you. Um, notice in this situation we were given a small part and a small part and we added them together. This one is slightly different because it gives you the whole piece and a small part. So in order to get the remaining piece, what do you think we're going to do? What would this, this long leg of the medium triangle be? Exactly, it would be x, take all of x, and take away 36. Good, so you're going to use that in your calculations. All right, and these are all just some, some. All right, so try a couple of those. <coughs> see how they are going to work out. Um, let's see what else we got. Ah, okay. So this is asking us to write out lots of relationships. So... Again, I would recommend this strategy of drawing out the three triangles and saying, what do I know? Okay, I know short leg, I know long leg, I know hypotenuse. Here, I know hypotenuse, I know long leg, and I know short leg. And in this, oh, I think I just did the smallest triangle on the medium. Let's undo that. Okay. So the medium triangle, B, is the hypotenuse, and the smallest triangle, A, is the hypotenuse. Okay. Um, Z, 
is a short leg, Y is a long leg, and A has Z as a long leg, and X is a short leg. Not a Y. Okay, great. So now, if we if we want to s write all the proportional relationships that are true, we saw in that warm up activity where you um, measured the parts of the triangle, we could do short leg over long leg. We could do a long leg over hypotenuse, and really, it could go, this could be switched. You could say long leg over short leg, hypotenuse over long leg. Um, and we're just trying to see that like these, all these ratios, all these proportions are going to be the same. And this is actually kind of setting us up for our trig unit that we're about to do. Okay, so the short leg, let's see, x is to z as x is to z as z is to y as a is to b. Right? So it's just asking us to think a little more abstractly and just identify what parts are, what ratios would be the same. All right, so here long leg to hypotenuse, z is to a as y is, oops, that's a y, y is to b as b is to c. All right, so we're taking long leg over hypotenuse. All right, so there are lots more that you could write there. That's what I'm going to leave you with, though. Okay? All right. <clears throat> and this one, this is an interesting one. So we're asking you to identify, place the numbers in such a way that makes these three triangles similar right triangles. So in order for them to be similar, all the proportions need to work out. Right? So we can test that um, in the end. Now we have a small a medium and a large. Make sure I can identify the right triangle. Okay, now if we work this out, I, like which one's going to be the longest side? This right here, hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side, but notice it's broken up into two parts. So this might not be the longest side. If this is a long leg and this is a hypotenuse, I'm pretty confident that this is going to be the longest side. So I look at the longest number, and I'm going to put the longest side in the longest side. All right, so technically this hypotenuse is longer, but I'd have to add those two. The sum of those two should be bigger than 80. All right, then let's try, like, the shortest side. Okay, the smallest triangle, the shortest side, this looks like 36 is going to go in here. And the next shortest would be 48. And the next shortest, or next longest... <laughs> Excuse me. Um, would be right there. All right, so I've taken care of that. And it looks like I just have one left, and that's 64. So if I added these two together, 64 and 36, I'd get 100, um, which makes sense that that would be the, lar the, the largest side. So here I get 160 and 80. Um, the smallest I would get 36, 48 and 60, and the medium, I would have 48 as the short side, 64 as the long side, and 80 as the hypotenuse. Okay, so now, in order to check it, I want to make sure that those, that they're proportional. The sides are proportional, the corresponding sides are proportional. Well, we could approach this in a couple ways, but um, let's go ahead and do the, the ratios, because that's what we've been practicing. Okay, so let's say, like, short leg over hypotenuse. So I'm going to test 36 over 60. I'm going to test 48 over 80. And I need to be consistent, uh, 60 over 100. All right, well, I know 60 over 100, 110 cancels. If I take 60 hundredths, it would be 0.6. All right. So we want to double check, does 48 divided by 80, does that give us 0.6? It does. And does 36 divided by 60, does that give us 0.6? It does. All right. So I feel pretty confident that these are the measurements that make all of those triangles similar right triangles. All right. 
Ah, what do you know about similarity? To justify that all three triangles are similar. Um, well, if we set up their proportion, the, the proportions are equal. I'm sorry, the ratios are equal. Um, all the corresponding sides are proportional. We could also look at the angles, which I think is on the next page. So here, if this is 90 degrees and this is 42 degrees, you can figure out what this is. And if this whole thing is 90 degrees, you can figure out what this is. So I want you to go ahead and figure out all those angles and see how that matters. Remember, we worked with side, angle, side, angle, angle, and side, side, side to, to show triangle similarity. So here it's saying given this triangle with altitude xz, let's talk about what altitude means, um, we want you to show that this triangle is similar to those other two triangles. So an altitude is something that you drop a perpendicular straight down. So they dropped this line xz and it's perpendicular to the line it hits. All right, um, so you want to go ahead and, and figure out all those angles so that you can show that all of those triangles are similar. All right, then it gives you some values of xz and yz. We can find the other values by setting up uh, proportions. Okay, how about this one? This one's a good one. Use what you know about triangle similarity to identify the proportional relationships below that are true. So I'm gonna, just going to do one, and I want you guys to do the other three and figure out which would, which ones of these are true. So I see 9 is to 15. 9 is to 15. Nope, nope, sorry. 9 is to 15. So it looks like short leg is to hypotenuse. Short leg is to hypotenuse. And then I see 16 is to 20. 16 is to 20, and this is long leg and hypotenuse. Long leg and hypotenuse. Um, is that a true statement? Is that how we set up our proportion? No, it is not. So this would not be accurate. <coughs> if we wanted it to be an accurate statement, we would need to put a 12 there in order for that to be a short leg. So um, identify which of the below are true, so I would say this one is false. Alright, um, and technically you could calculate that and say, okay, well what is 20 divided by 25? Write it out as a decimal and see, is it equal? Um, it should be equal, but I think it's good practice to identify like, okay, 20 is the long leg of the large triangle. So we've got long leg over, whoa, where did we get 25 from? Oh, okay, if I add up 9 and 16, there's, there's 25. So work with that figure out which of those other three are um, proportional. Okay, um, so this is just kind of a visual representation of what we've been talking about. Um, they're just saying, okay, AD, this side length, this short leg corresponds with other, what other short legs? Well, it corresponds with BD, that's another short leg of the middle, medium sized triangle. And then it also corresponds with a, a B, which is the short leg of the large triangle, as the short side. Or the short leg, I guess is what we've been calling it. And you can continue and see what else all corresponds. If you want to write out your A, Bs, and Ds, um, this would be A this would be D, and this would be B. Um, so you can maybe just see, oh yeah, there's the short leg, short leg, short leg. Um, and here the angles are labeled very clearly. So you can see one tick mark, two tick marks. Oh, that's also an interesting um, characteristic. If you notice, since this is a right angle, this angle right here and this angle end up being the same. And so do these two. So it's kind of an interesting character. So all three triangles have the same angle, angle, angle.
Um, so we can show angle-angle similarity. Um, all right. Cool. Ah, okay. So then I think there was, uh, we played a game, but it was just, um, helping kids. So you got a hundred points and then you wager, uh, how many points do you, like, how confident are you in your answer? And we had a fun little game in class. Um, but for you guys, it's just going to be a little bit of practice. So if we know 4, we know 11, we want to find X, try to figure it out. Okay? All right. Again, this be careful. This is 26. This distance is 26. This distance is X. So if you want to know this distance, it's going to be a whole 26 but you have to take away x, so be careful of that. All right, so there are some practice for you. All right. Um, okay. All right, so there's a bunch of practice. You can work on that. I don't know that I, you're gonna need me for that. I think these are all similar, ha ha ha, similar situations, right? Triangle proportions. Okay, but I think there is something on mid segments. So these are applications. Um, And it's pretty much the same thing. Um, we're just, you know, short side is the long side as, I'm sorry, long side is the short side as long side is the short side. So again, be careful that long side would be x plus 32. You want to add those together to get that long side to set up that ratio. Um, all right, this is starting to really look like trig. I can't wait till we get to that. That's our next video. All right, so they're just showing you, you can you can use this in some applications if you have um, a spot across a river and you know how, uh, you know, you know one distance, you can figure out another distance by using similar triangles. All right, um, so again, some more practice. Here we're trying to prove that um, two triangles are similar, so we've got some side lengths. Um, to use. Oh, ah, and it's also given that they're parallel. So let's talk about real quickly, what do we know when two lines are parallel and they're cut by a transversal? Oh, or really any transversal. So there's a multiple transversals there. Um, we had a lot of vocabulary with this, right? So we had corresponding angles, right? Corresponding angles are congruent. Um, those are corresponding angles. These are also corresponding angles. Let me put two. Um, so here we could show angle, angle, but also really they share this angle right here. This is the same angle as itself, All right? So given this <coughs> important piece of given information that these two uh, lines are parallel to each other really helps us find a lot of information out. All right, so side splitting theorem. Okay, uh, this was not on the last video because I was having other technological issues. So um, this one is covering a little bit more, um, which is great. All right, side splitting theorem. So recall from the triangle mid segment theorem, and you know I'm not sure we worked on that. So let's talk about triangle mid segment. It is really cool. So the triangle mid-segment is saying, let's say this is 5, and this is 5, and this is 4, and this is 4. If this is, mm, let's say, 6, oh, that's not, that doesn't look like a 6, let's try that again. If this is 6 units, then this is going to be 12 units. So the mid-segment, it's the middle because there's it's equidistant. There's five units here and five units there. 
here, four units there, four units. So it's the midpoint of each of these sides, right? This whole side is eight. This whole side is ten. But halfway at the mid midpoint, I draw this line from the midpoint here to the midpoint there. Whatever this other third side is, that mid segment is going to be half of whatever that length was. So if this was ten, this would be five. If this was 14, that would be 7. Okay, so that was the mid segment there. Um, so let's see. Um, recall from the triangle mid segment theorem that the mid segment of a triangle is parallel to one side of the triangle and that its length is half the length of the base of the triangle. The side splitting theorem applies to any segment that is parallel to one side of the triangle. So this one now, we are not halfway. This is not a true statement. That's that's not happening. Nope, it's not equal. Um, or I guess it could be, but it doesn't have to be equal on top and bottom, right? Um, so the side splitting theorem states that a line parallel to one side of the triangle, so here's parallel to there, um, divides the other two sides proportionally. Proportionally. Okay, and we've been working with proportions, so this isn't anything too new. Um, the diagram hopefully helps you remind... To me, this is, like, really overwhelming. Um, I, I, this, this is just hard to understand. But if you want to take a few minutes and try to kind of wrap your head around it, um, it's saying, okay, upper left, so the upper left... Um, divided by the lower left, lower left, if I take one part and divide it by the other part, it's going to equal the upper right, upper right, divided by the lower right. Okay, so top is to bottom as top is to bottom. All right, okay. But you could also say upper left is to whole, so you could do the part and the total, is equal to the part and the total. All right. Um, we could also do upper left and upper right. Whoa, okay. So upper left is to the upper right as the lower left is to the lower right. Wow. So there are a lot of different ways we can set up these proportions. Okay. All right. So let's look at some actual problems. Okay. So what this is saying is I can say 2 is to 10 as 3 is to x. 2 is to 10 as 3 is to x because those are parallel. All right. I could also say 2 is to 3 as 10 is to x. Let's make sure we get the same answer. All right. If I multiply this 2 times x, I get 2x equals 30 and divide and x equals 15. And here I get 2 times x, 2x equals 30. Hey, wait a second, we got the same exact thing, x equals 15. So it's, it's a neat property, it's called the side splitting theorem. Um, so if you have a particular way you prefer to do it, part is to part, as part is to part, or part is to whole, um, but we wanna be comfortable and be a little bit flexible, like 4 is to 10, right? So I'm doing part is to whole as part is to whole. So let's try this, as x is to x plus 9, okay? So here we have 10x, and here, be careful, we need to distribute that 4 to both the x and the 9. So I get 4x plus 36, um, subtract our 4x, and put that together, so 6x equals 36. We're going to divide both sides by 6, and x equals 6. All right. Great. So that is side splitting theorem. So you guys have a couple of practice problems there. So notice how this one gives you the whole length. So 8 plus 3, I would suggest using 11. So part is to whole as part is to whole. And you're not using that 3, right? I mean, you needed it, but 8 is to 11 as 6 is to x, right? You're doing the top is to the total, the top is to the total.
All right, these take a little practice, so you want to practice getting comfortable with those. Ah, yes, okay. This is it. Let's do this. All right, and then I will stop this video. It's starting to get kind of long. All right, um, <coughs> so find the value of x. So I, uh, I see that they are parallel. That's important. We need to see that those are parallel in order to apply that um, mid-segment, I'm sorry, not mid-segment, uh, side-splitting theorem. Um, so here I'm just going to focus on this for a moment. Uh, and I'm going to say, okay, part, this part is to that part as this part is to that part. I'm going to try that one. Okay, so 4 is to 8. The top is to the top as the side x minus 1 is to x plus 5. Alright. So we want to make sure that these two ended up on the same side. These two ended up corresponding. Okay. Get rid of those dots. No, I didn't want to refresh. Undo. Undo. Okay. Whew. All right, so we're going to multiply that 4 times x plus 5, and we're going to multiply the 8 times x minus 1, and distribute that in 4x plus 20 and 8x minus 8. Let's add 8 and get 28. Subtract 4, 4x, and divide by 4. So 28 divided by 4 is 7. 7 equals x. So we need to be careful and see what are they asking for. Find the value of x. x is equal to 7. Now I would never want to just put x equals 7 without having my work and showing how I came up with that answer. Um, find the length of cf. Okay, where is cf? So let's see, here's cf. Whoa, okay. So I need to find this. I'm going to call it y because we've already used x. So now I see 18 here. I can't say it's the mid segment. I can't. I can't say that, but I can say. Hmm. What can I say? Let's see. All right. So um, what I th what I'm thinking we need to do is let's plug in x is seven. If we plug in 7, we get 7 plus 5 is 12, and 12, if I look at this whole side length right here, from A to E, 12 plus 8 is 20, plus 4 is 24. So if I draw that large triangle, I've got 24 and 18. Now, this triangle is similar, because these are parallel. I know that all these angles are the same, all these angles are the same, and I know that this angle is the same as that angle. So each of these triangles, I have three triangles here, right? And all three of those are similar triangles. <coughs> so we can do the proportions for the similar triangles. So if I know that the large side base, let's call that the base, and this side is 24, um, and I want to figure out this. So here I have 8 and 12 would be 20. So on my smaller triangle, whoops, that, we'll say that's 20, and I want to find this as y. So I can set up a proportion here and say 20 is to 24 as y is to 18. 20 is to 24 as y is to 18. And we can work that out. All right, so we end up with y equals 15. And that was what they were asking. C, find the length of CF. So we had to use a couple of things that we knew. We knew something about similar triangles, that each of these triangles was similar. Um, and then we needed to use our proportions. All right, so we found that the length of CF is 15 units. All right. Um, great, actually, yeah. Cool. So you have a couple more practice problems with side splitting theorem. Uh, and then I think we're good. Some similarity homework, extra practice. This is a really good one to try. All right. Um, you know what? Let's do this.
I would like for you, um, hmm. No, it's okay. All right. Um, please try this one. This one's a really good one to try to practice for Thursday. All right. Thank you for watching. Sorry about the volume issue on the other video. So, um, thank you to those of you who alerted me to that. And, um, some of you didn't even know, uh, because you hadn't started working yet. <laughs> okay. Um, but I'm glad you're watching it now. Thank you. Thank you. And I will see you guys on Thursday. Okay.